Hi guys, welcome to this video. Um, I'm Leanne from Avoiding Broke and I'm so pleased that you've joined me for this one. So here we're going to be talking about competency-based interviews. Now you may have heard them called things like situational interviews, structured interviews, or even behavioral interviews. But here I'm going to refer to competency-based interviews, but it's exactly the same thing. So we're going to go through in this video what they are, how you should answer the questions, and then also a bit of information about the timings that I would suggest that you would spend on each part. So if you're ready, let's get going. Okay guys, so what are competency-based interviews? These are like any other normal interview where you'd have assessors and they'd be asking you questions, but what they're doing in these interviews is testing particular skills and they do this in a certain way by asking you questions where you have to give an example or tell them about a time when you did something. So the type of skills that you would be testing are things like leadership, teamwork, communication, negotiation, those kind of skills and attributes that you can tell they're going to be quite useful in the working world and they will be specific to the role that you are going for. And the questions are going to be in the form of something like, give me an example when you did X or tell me about a time when you did Y. So really what the assessor is looking for is a nice clear story where you can fully show how you have the skills that that interview is assessing. So for example, if we're talking about leadership here and the question could be, tell me about a time when you led a team. Something as simple as that, but there they are assessing your leadership skills where you need to tell them a story and a story has a beginning, a middle and an end. And so then on that note, Let's move on to how you should answer the questions. So like I said before, you need to give a clear, structured answer because when you have such an open question and sometimes competency-based interviews have such open questions, it can be easy to, let's face it, waffle on a little bit and be a bit incoherent and go off on different tangents. So it's really useful to have a framework that allows you to stay structured. And that framework that most people talk about is the STAR framework. But I don't think the STAR framework goes far enough. I think everybody will look at the STAR framework, but I think you can really show that you can shine by adding on just a little bit extra at the end of STAR. So for me, the framework that I would use is called the STAR L framework or STAR framework. So basically I'm just saying STAR but with an L on the end. Okay, so let's go through exactly what each of those letters stand for. So the S in STAR stands for situation. You're just given a bit of context. What situation were you in? So here you can say you were working as part of a team delivering X or you were on a university committee, something like that. Something just sets a bit of the context. And linked with that is the T. I always think of the S and the T that go together. T is task. So you've got your situation and the task that you were set to do. So for example, you could say that you were working in a team delivering X and you needed to get agreement from the director to increase the budget by X percent. That could be your situation and your task. Done neatly, it just gives context. The actual main part of your answer comes next and that is the A and that is the action. So here you're talking about the actions that you took. Here you have to think about just yourself. What did you do? So here you need to use lots of I language. So you'll be saying things like, I put together a presentation on the reasons that I thought we needed to increase the budget so that I could be clear with the decision maker on exactly what the increased budget would be used for and things like that. So you really, really need to remember here it's I. Don't talk about we, don't talk about the team, not what other people did. The assessor is really, really interested in exactly what you did. So always think I when you're talking about the actions because here you're demonstrating the skills that you have and so the person is looking to employ you so they want to know about your skills it's so important I couldn't stress that enough because I've seen so many people that come into interviews and start talking about we and the team did this and then it's quite hard then to mark them against the criteria that you need to show that they've demonstrated those skills so please just talk about I in here if you take nothing else from this video that would be the main point. 
Okay, so the next part is the results. So you've set the scene, you've spoken about exactly what you have done in the actions, and then you're gonna say what the results are. So you'd say something like, as a result of the actions that I took, this was the result. The decision maker agreed that we could increase the budget by X percent. That tells a nice, clear story. Can you see how that has a beginning? You're setting the scenes, that's your once upon a time. Then you have the actions in the middle, which is like the meat, that's where all the action happens. It's the main part of the story. And then you have the results at the end and they lived happily ever after. It really is just a nice, clear story that you're trying to tell. But like I said, I don't think that goes far enough. Yes, that's what most people would do and you may be able to tick off all the boxes, but if you really want to shine, I think you should take it that next step further. And that's the L. And for me, that is learning. What did you learn from it? And here I'll be talking about things like, if I were in this situation again, I would do this. And here, for example, I would be clearer on this part of the presentation because that seemed to be where the decision maker really wanted to focus. So I'd make sure that I had more detail there. So for me, that is so important because on lots of projects that, that I've worked on, we, there's always a part at the end of that project where you're talking about lessons learned, what can we do better next time? And if you can show the people that you're interviewing that you already have that mindset where you're already looking to develop, to grow, to adapt, to take on feedback, I think that will hold you in such good stead. So you can give a great answer using your STAR framework and then just take it that little bit further with your L that you're learning. Okay, so let's talk about timings. How long should you spend on each of the different elements of the STAR L framework? So for an example, if you say had five minutes to answer your question, I would be spending no more than 30 seconds on your situation and your task. That is literally just context there, just so that the interviewer can follow what you're saying, so that it just doesn't come out of the blue, but it's, it's not that important, so 30 seconds maximum. The main part of your answer should be the actions, because this is where you're showing the skills that you have. So here I would be spending up my five minutes, at least three minutes, main chunk, make sure you cover everything that you did. Really show them your skills. And then you have your results and then the learning. So here, because you've got a minute and a half left, I would just split it evenly between them. The results are important because you want to show what happened following your, your actions. And then the learning, like I said, so important to show that you are reflective, you're taking on board what happened, how you can improve, and you're constantly thinking of those things. So I would spend 45 seconds on each of those. I really hope you found it useful and I really wish you the best of luck on your career journeys. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful. If you do like our content, then subscribe to our channel. You can do that by clicking the subscribe button and just hit the bell icon so you know when we release a new video. On our YouTube channel, you'll see videos on career advice, so things like interview tips and assessment centers, those kind of things. Also, we cover um, financial education and also mindset and positivity. So if you like the idea of those things, then please do subscribe to our channel. You can also find us across the social media platforms at Avoiding Broke, so do connect with us. And guys, until the next video, you take care, good luck on your journeys, and I look forward to seeing you soon.